Namaste everybody, welcome back to our 30 day challenge. Today is day 17 and it's all about life. So we're going to be focusing a bit on a lock which I'm going to very briefly explain for all of you so that you have an idea because I'm sure that in some of your yoga classes this is something you've heard about before but don't know much about or maybe nothing about. But before we begin I want to explain this hammock that we've got hanging here. Before I was always removing that for our videos just so that it looked a little prettier around here. But I don't know if you remember on day 10 we had that tiny little bird that came and landed over here. Um, and then we realized they were using this hammock for a place to build a nest. So we've decided we're going to leave that there for them. And they just keep landing on a little rope here and jumping over and building their nest. So hopefully they keep doing it while we film and we may see the little guys um, going about their daily lives. I mean, how fitting for our, our class called life. Life is going on around us right here. It's absolutely precious. You see both of them with little sticks in their mouths, building the nest together. It's just beautiful. It's, it's so lovely to be around all this nature. Okay, so guys, find a nice comfortable seat. And I'm just gonna briefly explain because it, you can go into quite a lot of depth about the locks in the body and what they mean um, and why we use them. So today we're gonna focus on our root lock, which is down here in the pelvis. Now I know a lot of teachers don't like to talk about this area of anatomy because it can be a little embarrassing. But basically it's called Mula Bandha. Now maybe in a yoga class you've heard somebody say engage your root lock or engage your Mula Bandha. Basically Mula means uh, root and Bandha is your locks in your body where, which you can engage, which helps you either with stability, um, it can also help with building the strength within those internal muscles as well and it also goes into more depth than that but we're going to keep it at that today. So what we want to do and this is where teachers find it embarrassing basically it's the lock between your anus and your genitals. So what you want to do especially for men imagine you are going to the toilet and you want to hold mid-flow so that's the kind of feeling you want to feel between the genitals and the anus, is you want to feel this contraction of the muscle there. And this is something that with time and the more that you practice yoga, naturally you will start to engage that lock. And this is really great for the pelvic floor and for women as well, especially women who have had babies and even post uh, baby times because this part of the body, once you've really strengthened it, the pelvic floor and everything, it helps with core strength, it helps us so much. So it's really important. And I want to introduce it this early on in your, in your yoga practice, because I don't want you to be confused when you go to a class and think, what is this Mula Bandha? What is this root lock? What are people talking about? Now you have an idea. So for ladies, it's a bit like your, um, your pelvic floor exercises where you, where you strengthen that part of the body down there and then you let go. But instead of letting go, you just keep it contracted. So again, imagine you're sucking everything up and in, down, down below basically. So take a comfortable seat and let's close our eyes and all of us together, it's easier practiced while sitting. Actually, when you're in inversions like downward facing dog, or one of those types of moves or while you're moving it especially in the beginning it's really difficult and it takes a lot of concentration to engage that lock in particular it's quite easy to just suck the, the belly up and in but when it comes to the mula bandha that can be quite tricky so it's something that you just need to practice throughout the throughout the practice today i'm going to keep um, encouraging you guys to remember to lock it and you'll see how different it feels in different poses but let's start off seated. And as it's the root lock, a seated position is much easier to be able to feel the contraction of what's going on. So let's close our eyes, sit up nice and tall. Place your hands on your lap. Before you close your eyes, sorry, let's take the prana mudra, which is the mudra of life. Taking your baby finger and your um, ring finger, turn those fingers over into a curl and place the thumb on top of them. Then your middle finger and your index finger, extend them out 
so they're nice and long and do the same on the other hand curling the ring finger and the baby finger thumb on top and extending the middle and index finger out long just sit up nice and tall keep the fingers like this and now let's slightly engage the belly to start with and when you're ready try to engage your mula bandha that lock between the genitals and the anus so sucking up and in feeling a contraction and if you can try to hold that try to hold that for five breaths in the beginning this takes some time and maybe you keep releasing it and you think oh, I can't I can't just keep it locked that's okay it'll come with time just so that you know where it is and it is one of the most important locks it's a place that we really want to tone up that's the superficial side of the of the lock is to get everything toned internally as well so now engage your breath breathe in deeply in and out of the nose for five breaths trying to keep that lock engaged while you breathe let's start on our inhale Just breathe at your own pace, in and out of the nose. Wonderful. I hope you guys felt that contraction going on down there. If you did, then great. Let's, let's continue with our practice. So take your fingers back into your mudra. Close your eyes and let's just take five deep breaths. Again, engaging that same lock in Mula Bandha. Close the eyes, sit up tall and just become one with the body. Really listen to the inhales and exhales. wonderful try to keep that lock and on an inhale lift the hands above the head exhale to your heart center bow the head and thank yourself for showing up today day 17 i'm really proud of you for sticking with this you can open your eyes namaste let's begin let's start off on all fours and again let's try to engage our lock so knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. See if in this tabletop position you can engage that Mula Bandha. And now this is going to feel a little more tricky for you because we're in a different position to seated. But just see if you can. Close your eyes, take two deep breaths. And don't worry if you can't find it. This is just a practice, guys. Keep practicing it. Whenever you remember, oh, my Mula Bandha, I must try and engage that. Then try to see if you can get it to engage. Now on an inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine. Draw the chin towards the chest. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine. Take one more. Inhale, drop the belly, look up. Exhale, arch the spine. Push away from the floor with the palms. And 
and come back to neutral. Walk your hands a little forward and let's just roll our hips from side to side. Making the legs straight as you come forward and really dipping from one side to the other. Just rolling through the hips. Inhale as you come forward and exhale back. Now let's rotate in the opposite direction. Take two more rotations here. And then become still, stretch the arms out and start to move forward. Rest the head on the ground, keep your knees below the, below the hips. If you can take your chin to the floor, then do that. Mm. And enjoy the stretch through the shoulders, opening up. See if you can engage your mula bandha here. You may find this a little easier because naturally you're already engaging the core here. So try to suck in the mula bandha, really strengthening there. On an inhale, let's walk our hands back and take our first downward facing dog. Send the hips up and back into downward facing dog. If, you're, if your heels aren't touching the ground still, then no worries at all, be where you are. Walk through the feet and then become nice and still. And now we're in a bit of an inversion, so see if you can engage the Mula Bandha here. Suck the belly up and in, and then really send your attention all the way to your root lock there that we spoke about, and see if you can suck it up and in and, and engage that part of the body. Let's take three deep breaths. Now slowly walk forward to the front of the mat and let's take a forward fold. Hold on to the elbows, hang nice and heavy and now try to engage your lock here. So there's all these different positions and it will feel different every time for you. The same sort of sensation but some, some positions will be a little harder than others. If you haven't quite got it, that's okay. We're going to take three deep breaths here. Keep trying to engage the Mula Bandha, as well as keeping your breath nice and long and deep. Keep that engagement and inhale, look up, halfway lift. Really sucking in the Mula Bandha. Exhale, lower down. Bend your knees whenever you need to. Inhale the hands all the way to the sky. Touch them above the head. Look up and draw the hands to your heart center. Now if you've, locked the enga if you've lost the engagement of your lock, try to engage it here while you stand. Concentrate on that part of the body just for a bit. Inhale the hands to the sky and exhale, lift up through the left leg and we're going to step back and come into our warrior two. So step back as far as you can, starting to lean forward, take it nice and slow and step back. Keep that back foot about a 45 degree angle to the back of the mat. Keeping the hips nice and open. 
with the long edge of the mat. Lean forward into that forward leg. And now here in your warrior two, looking over your fingertips, see if you can engage the mula bandha here. Sucking up and in, focusing on that lock, on that part of the body. Also engaging the core at the same time, keeping that sucked in. Look forward over your fingertips. Now, how is that feeling in this position? It can be a little more tricky to hold on to it. You may find that you keep letting it go. That's okay. That's why we call this a practice, because there's a lot of little things that we need to keep focusing on. Now, inhale, lean forward. Bring your hand forward. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Look up. Straighten through the front leg. And we're going to come down for our, tri our triangle. Take your hand either to just to the calf or even just to the inside thigh if you can't get any lower than that. Or you can take your hand to the inside of the foot all the way down to the ground and look up towards your left fingertips. Now here in triangles, see if you can engage the Mula Bandha once again. We're going to take three deep breaths. And let's roll forward back into our warrior two. Hands out in front of you. Keep the legs nice and strong. Engage that Mula Bandha once again. You're going to hear that word a lot throughout the class today, so it's going to be drilled into you guys. <laughs> now straighten through the front leg, rotate through the back leg so that the heel is off the ground and start to lean forward into your high lunge. Now suck in the Mula Bandha here, engage the lock, hands to the sky, or to your heart center, whichever feels better for you and for your neck. Keep the hips squared off to the front of the mat. And on an exhale, let's step forward. Come back into tree, shake out our legs. Inhale the hands to the sky, touch them above the head. Exhale, let's fold forward. Suck in the core. Try to engage that root lock once again. On an inhale, look up. Engage the Mula Bandha. Plant the hands and let's step back into plank. Now take an easy plank by dropping the knees whenever you need. But here in plank, let's see if we can engage that Mula Bandha once again. Sucking up and in. Maybe tucking the tailbone a little bit helps as well. Look straight down and then exhale. Let's take our chaturanga and take a back bend of your choice, either a baby cobra, full cobra, or upward facing dog. In your back bend, try to engage your mula bandha once again. And then exhale, send your hips up and back for your downward facing dog. Walk out the legs. If you want to take a child's pose instead of downward facing dog right now, then feel free to drop the knees and take a child's. We're going to be in downward facing dog for five deep breaths. Really trying to engage that Mula Bandha. Every time you let go, just get it straight back again. Become nice and strong, opening up through the shoulder blades, sending the tailbone up towards the sky, trying to engage that important lock. Close the eyes if you want to, or just look between the legs. And let's stay here for five deep breaths.
wonderful wherever you are if you're in child's come up into a downward facing dog and together let's walk slowly to the front of the mat once again let's take a forward fold we're going to hold on to each elbow feel free to bend the knees allow everything to hang heavy and let's take three deep breaths allowing ourselves to connect with Mula Bandha once again in a completely different position on an inhale halfway lift keep that lock if you can exhale fold forward inhale your hands to the sky touch the palms above the head and draw them to your heart center reconnect to Mula Bandha suck up through the belly engage your lock keep the legs nice and strong and ever so slightly internally rotate the hips not too much, just ever so slightly. On an inhale, lift up through the right leg and we're gonna do the same on the other side now. As you exhale, start to lean forward and as slowly as you can, we're gonna step our leg back for our warrior two. So slowly come down and take that back leg at about a 45 degree angle once again to the back of the mats, lean nice and forward into the front leg, open up through the arms, look over the fingertips, engage up through the knee of the back leg, so you keep that leg nice and strong. And now let's see if we can engage our Mula Bandha once again here. Taking three deep breaths. On an inhale, lean forward, and let's reverse our warrior, taking the back arm behind us, down the leg, inhaling the top arm above head. And exhale, straighten through the leg. Engage Mula Bandha once again before we come down for our triangle. Take the hand to the inside thigh, the other, the, sorry, the right hand to the air, or down to the calf, or even all the way down to the floor. If you need to put a micro bend, and do that keep the hips nice and open the heart towards the sky or straight ahead look up towards your top fingers and engage that lock once again take one more deep breath On an inhale, let's lean forward, come back into our warrior two. Arms out, stretching out the fingertips, looking over the left fingertips, and now try to engage your lock once again. There's a lot going on here, guys, so I wanna give you a bit of time. Now on an exhale, start to rotate the back leg so that the heels off the floor, square off through the hips with the front of the mat. Inhale the hands either above the head or to the heart center. You can look up if this feels okay for your neck. And once again, engage Mula Bandha, sucking it up and in. One more deep breath and let's step forward to the top of the mat hands to the heart center let's tune back into the inner body stand up nice and tall big toes touching heels ever so slightly apart engage through the thighs engage the belly close the eyes if you'd like to hands to your heart center Keep your neck nice and long, the spine nice and long. And see if you can engage your Mula Bandha here, keeping it nice and firm.
Just take three deep breaths, just tuning into the body and having a little moment of relaxation. When you're ready, inhale your hands up above the head, touch the palms, exhale, fold forward from the hips. Coming into a forward fold, let's hold our forward fold for three deep breaths here. You can either place the hands on the ground, you can hold onto the elbows, or just let the hands drape on the floor, if you have the flexibility, and only if you do. You're more than welcome to walk your feet slightly apart, so that they hip distance apart and maybe place your hands underneath the feet only if this is accessible to you and already in your practice send the tailbone up towards the sky drop the head allow everything to be nice and heavy in whichever version feels better for you and let's hold for three breaths Try to engage your Mula Bandha once again. Really concentrate on sucking that part of the body, locking it in, squeezing it together. Three deep breaths. On an inhale, halfway lift, look up. Exhale, if your hands are underneath the feet, release them, plant the hands, and let's step back into our, into our plank, nice and strong. Drop the knees whenever you need to. Engage your Mula Bandha here, wherever you are. And let's come down all the way to the belly this time. Everybody, as slowly as you can, Inhale to baby cobra, hands off of the ground. Look up. Exhale, come on down. Create a nice little platform for your head and let's take a moment of rest here. <sighs> Relax everything, including your, your root lock, Mula Bandha. Return to your natural breath before we begin. Now take a nice deep breath in and come on up onto your forearms for Sphinx Pose. Fingers spread nice and wide, looking forward, keeping the legs engaged, sucking in the belly and from here try to engage your Mula Bandha once again. Take one more deep breath. And then let's send our hips back all the way to our feet. And we're gonna send our legs out in front of us. That's it for our standing poses today. Now we're gonna just practice engaging our Mula Bandha in different seated positions. Sit up on your sit bones and we're gonna take boat pose. <clears throat> A little bit of core. Start to lean backwards. Start to lean backwards. Take your hands behind your knees if you need to for a little bit of support. Or take them away and start to lift up through the feet. And here in boat pose, see if you can engage your lock once again. 
Let's hold boat for three seconds, or three deep breaths, should I say. Exhale, your hands to the knees, draw them into the body. Try to keep the feet off the ground. And again, maybe even cross the feet. And again, try to engage your Mula Bandha here. If you fall out of this, it's okay. It's quite a bit of balance work going on here without touching the floor with the feet. Now, if you can, see if you can start to lift the feet back into boat without touching the ground. Take the hands behind the knees whenever you need to. Lean back, keep the shoulders away from the ears, back and down, looking straight ahead. And three more breaths here. Try to engage your Mula Bandha. Now cross your legs in the opposite direction. Draw the knees towards the chest. See if you can hover them above the floor. Sit up nice and tall. And again, try to engage your root lock. So all these different positions. It's really great to just feel out that lock. See what's going on down there. Takes a little bit of brain power to really work it out and think, is it, is it, is it locked? I'm not sure. Especially in the beginning, it's hard to tell. But as long as you're sending some attention there, then you're doing the right thing already. Now release the legs and let's do one more boat pose. Remember to use the hands for support if you need it or just come straight up to boat. Looking straight ahead, three deep breaths. And now cross the feet. Come into a nice cross-legged position just for a moment. Oh, the little birds are back. You may see them a minute in the frame. They've both got some uh, straw in their mouths, which is <laughs> just so cute. So I'm gonna face you guys and we're gonna do some nice hip openers now. Coming into one of my favorites, butterfly, but we're gonna do butterfly a little differently today. Again, remember, if your hips are really tight, your knees are gonna be up here and that's okay. If you need to, just stay here. Sit up tall, hold onto the ankles or the feet and just be there and try to engage your Mula Bandha from here. Sucking in the belly as well and engaging that really important lock. Feel it out, see how it is. For those of you that can go further and allow your hips to drop down, take your feet forward this time, so not close to the crutch. Slightly different today. Get your sit bones to touch the ground by maybe moving a little bit of the flesh away from underneath the bum. The feet together, open them out like a book. Now this is gonna feel slightly different than when your feet are close to the body. You may not be able to come down as low as you normally can. So you can just either hold onto the ankles, rest your um, forearms on top of the legs and sit up nice and tall through the spine. Close the eyes. And from here, try to engage your Mula Bandha. Suck in the lower belly and engage the root lock. Again, it's gonna feel a little different here. You may find it slightly easier now that you're grounded on the ground once again. Keep the spine long, keep the neck long. Let's take five deep breaths here, really tuning in and locking that Mula Bandha. If your body starts to open up for you and you can start to lean a little forward, then maybe lean forward as well.
take one more deep breath wherever you are. We're going to start to come on up. Now let's send our left leg like we often do towards the right side of the hip and then our right foot over the left. Remember you can stay here. We're going to sit up nice and tall, sucking up through our root lock and just stay here or you can come all the way down into cow face legs by moving forward, bringing the knees together and sitting back between the feet. So either of those is perfect. Be wherever you are. Sit up nice and tall, engage the Mula Bandha, engage through the core, sucking it all up and in. Just place the hands onto the knee and feel the lock here. Now that your legs are nice and close together, you may find it's a little easier to keep the lock. So you can see how different it is in each different pose and how much concentration it takes as well. So, although I've introduced you to this quite quickly into your practice, especially if this is something that is completely new to you, I'm glad that you know about it now because it is such an important part of a practice, Mula Bandha. It's so important to get those pelvic floor muscles nice and strong and that those, com those core muscles that surround it as well makes for a really strong practice uh, amongst other things but on a physical level it's great for your practice and it's also really good to prevent future things that can happen down there so I'm glad that we're talking about it now starting to focus on that part of the body Take two more deep breaths here. And let's take a twist, taking our left arm to this right leg, looking over the right shoulder. In your twist, keep your lock. Take three deep breaths in your twist. And then come back to centre, release the top leg nice and gently, lifting it back up and then take it over that leg, be gentle with it, squeeze it in towards the body just for a moment and let's swap over. So taking our right foot towards the left side of the hip, walk that top leg a little closer towards the, th so that it's behind the knee here and you can stay here, that's fine. Sit up nice and tall if this is where you are. And remember you can even prop your hips up if this is something you need. Or let's come into full Gomakasana legs, bringing the knees together and sitting back. If you feel any pain even though you've attempted the, the Gomakasana legs, then just ease out of it and start to lift up this top leg and come into the easier version. But if it feels okay and you're just feeling a little stretch in the hip here, then that's absolutely fine. Sit here, close your eyes, engage the, the belly, sucking it up and in, and then engage your lock, your Mula Bandha. Anytime you feel it starting to release, just suck it back up. It's the only way I can describe it. Suck it back up. Take three deep breaths here. Now let's take our twist, right arm to the left leg, 
look over towards the left shoulder and again engage your Mula Bandha, keeping the belly nice and strong as well. Close the eyes and let's take three deep breaths here. Let's come back to centre, release that leg nice and slowly, lifting it up and then bringing it back over the top, squeeze it towards the body. Great job you guys. Let's come into a nice comfortable cross-legged position or any position that you feel comfortable doing a small meditation in. You're even welcome to lie down in your Shavasana if that's better for you. Sit up nice and tall, but wherever you are, we're going to again try to concentrate on our Mula Bandha. So let's take our, our prana, prana Mudra, taking your ring finger and your baby finger, curl them over, thumb over the top, extend through the index finger and the middle finger, place that on your knee. Do the same with the other, ring finger, baby finger, curled over, thumb over the top, index finger and middle finger, Hold them together and extend them out. Sit up nice and tall. Engage through the Mula Bandha, feel that lock. You may find it a little easier now that you've tried it in all the different positions. And let's allow our breath to return back to normal. Concentrate all of your time and your energy and your thoughts on your Mula Bandha. Allow the mind to become completely still here and if any thoughts come into your mind, just allow them to pass. And then take your attention straight back to the sensations of your lock, of your root lock. Let's take 10 breaths, sorry, let's take five deep breaths before we engage and just come into the body into our natural breath. Now release your breath and just allow it to go to your complete natural rhythm. Let's breathe here just for a moment. Staying with that silence and feeling the lock. Release the fingers, keep your lock, and just place your hands in your lap for another 10 seconds. Keeping your thoughts on the body, on how you're feeling, on the Mula Bandha, keeping it engaged. On an inhale, keeping the eyes closed, let's reach the hands up and above the head. Draw the hands together and down towards the heart center. Bow your head, 
thank yourself for showing up again today. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow and to what tomorrow has to bring. You can open your eyes. Namaste.